Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Last week, I picked this up on eBay. This is the Intel NUC or Intel NUC Skull Canyon version. They do market this for gaming, but it, it's not as powerful as a lot of people might think for the price. I didn't pay full price. I made an offer for $270 and I'm gonna leave a link to that eBay listing down below. He's got like 19 of them. They do not come with RAM or an SSD. I already had an eight gigabyte stick of DDR4 laying around and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. I used an 80 millimeter version. Like I mentioned, I did get mine on eBay for $270. It was $15 shipping, so I have $285 into this. If you look on Newegg, they're like 600 bucks. So the one I received from the seller looked like brand new. I mean, there's not a scratch on this thing. The box was a little beat up, but other than that, this thing looks like it's never been used. On the front of the unit, we have a power button, a full-size SD card slot, two USB 3.0 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and an infrared sensor. On the back of the unit, we have a full-size HDMI 2.0 port, USB Type-C Thunderbolt port, mini display port, two USB 3.0 ports, gigabit ethernet, and it has a weird 3.5 millimeter audio toss jack. So if you get an adapter, you can use optical audio out here. The very last port on the end here is the power end for the whole unit. So the form factor is nice, but I wanna go over the specs. We have an Intel i7 6770HQ. It's clocked at 2.6 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 3.5. It's a quad core with six megabytes of cache and a 45 watt TDP. For the GPU, we do have an Intel Iris Pro 580. Now I know it's built in Intel graphics, but this is on par with like the 945M that comes in a lot of laptops. I believe this is Intel's most powerful integrated graphics that they make. This is the 580. And since the unit is equipped with Thunderbolt, you could use an external GPU like the Razer Core or something like that. I do not have one on hand to test with, and I don't think I'm gonna spend $500 on the Razer Core and then $500 on another GPU just to test with this unit. So I'm gonna be using the internal graphics, mainly for emulation, but I'm sure it's gonna handle some older games just fine. As for RAM, it'll take two sticks of DDR4 SODIMM, and each stick can be up to 16 gigabytes for a maximum of 32. I'm only using a single stick at eight gigabytes for this video. As for onboard storage, it does have two M.2 slots. You can use a 42 millimeter M.2 or an 80 millimeter M.2. I'm using one 80 millimeter 256 gigabyte stick here. It does have an Intel dual band wireless card, AC82060, so you get BGN and AC with Bluetooth 4.2, one Thunderbolt 3 port, one mini display port, four USB 3.0 ports, and an SD card slot on the front. It also has an infrared sensor on the front panel. If you watch my channel regularly, you know I love single board computers and mini PCs. So here's the Raspberry Pi 3 in size comparison to the NUC. I'll go ahead and pull the back off so you can see the internals. Now, like I said, it doesn't come with any storage or any RAM, so you have to add your own. I'm just gonna throw in an eight gigabyte stick and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. I have these laying around from a previous build. Right now, storage and memory is not cheap, so it's really up to you if you wanna invest the money in something like this. If you're looking to go super small, you also have to factor in the power brick here. This is a 45 watt, 19 volt power brick. It's not too bad. I mean, this sits under my desk anyway, so it's not gonna get in the way at all. With all the specs out of the way, let's go ahead and get into performance. I'm gonna move over to Windows 10 Pro and see how this thing does. All right, so here we are all booted up. This is the Intel Skull Canyon NUC or NUC with the i7-6770HQ at 2.6 gigahertz. Four cores, eight threads, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. So first up, I ran a couple benchmarks. First up, Geekbench 4. Single core, 3,806. Multi-core, 12,972. Really nice score here. Definitely not top of the line, but for the price I paid, this is actually a good deal. The next benchmark I ran was Antutu because I do a lot of Android stuff on this channel. I kind of wanted to compare it. We scored a 296,000. Blows every other Android device out of the water. And I definitely expected it to score a lot higher than any phone or any tablet on the market. In this video, I'm gonna test out some emulators. We got PS2, PSP, and Dolphin, which is GameCube. I'm also gonna test a few Steam games. 
I use LaunchBox. Now LaunchBox is free to use, but there is a premium paid version, which gives you big box. I'll show it to you here. I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I can skip this video if I wanted to, but I really like it, so I leave it going. This is just a startup video. You don't even have to have one of these running, but I like the way they look. So this is my quick setup here. I have handhelds, computers, and under computers I just have Windows because I have a few games here that I wanted to show you guys. First up, we're going to go to consoles. Now this is totally customizable, so yours doesn't have to look this way. There are tons of ways to make big box and launch box look. First up, we're going to go with Nintendo GameCube. And the game I always love to test is Soul Calibur 2. We're going to play it. I got a feeling it's going to run it pretty well. I do have the FPS listed up in the top left-hand corner and the bottom left-hand corner. I got you. Versus Tanim. Stop. She rides the wind freely, singing her songs is there no other way battle one fight all of these are out of the box settings i have not tweaked anything in the dolphin emulator nor psp or the ps2 emulator so if it's not running well there's something you can change and probably make it run perfect but this 60 fps it is dipping down every once in a while but you'll never feel that unless you're watching the FPS while you're playing. So will it run Nintendo GameCube games? Yes, it will. And it runs them really good. And we're going to move on to PlayStation 2. This is a big topic. I hope it runs it. Tekken 5. Only problem is, I'm using the PAL version, so it'll only run at 50 FPS. Let's see if it'll even do that. King of Iron Fist Tournament 5. You can change the aspect ratio if you like to, but I just leave it like it is. This is the way the PlayStation 2 ran its game, so I didn't want to stretch anything out. In my experience, this game is a little hard to emulate on a lot of systems, so that's why I chose it first. Like I mentioned, this is the PAL version of the game, so we'll only be able to hit 50 FPS. But it seems to be running it consistently at 50. I don't see many frame drops at all. If you have the NTSC version, it'll run at 60, and I'm pretty sure it'll handle that too. Very nice. And finally, for emulation, we'll do PSP. This is definitely going to handle N64 perfectly using Project 64 or Moop N64. So I don't even need to test it. PSP. We're going to do Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. This is one of the hardest games to emulate. The other one is God of War. But if it runs this, it's going to run God of War Chains of Olympus also. So in the menus, this does run at 60. In gameplay, it does 30. I had a feeling it was going to run it this well. 
It's a powerful little machine. If you watch my channel, you know I love small PCs. I mean, I got a big gaming computer that'll pretty much run anything, but I'd rather turn this thing on and mess around with it. Now I want to test a few full-fledged PC games. First up, Skyrim. I'm going to start out at 1080p on low settings because I know this thing doesn't have a very powerful GPU, but I think it's going to run this. FPS is listed in the top left-hand corner. We're sitting at 60. Pretty steady. There's a good chance it would run this at medium settings. I'm not even going to test it out here. Um, you know, Skyrim's an older game. I don't mind playing it at low. It still looks pretty good. They're going to mess me up. Got a lot of stuff going on here, and we're still sitting at 60. So it handles Skyrim at low pretty well. Next up, I want to test out Overwatch. I have everything set to low, but I do have the render scale set to 90%. Still looks really good, very playable. It dips down to 50s when there's a lot of action going on. It's not that bad though. Really decent performance. So overall, the performance is really good with this thing. You can use an external GPU because it does have USB 3.1 Thunderbolt on the back of it. That's really what they made it for, but I'm not going to spend $500 on just an enclosure for another GPU that I have to buy. This thing's going to work perfect for emulation, and that's really why I got it. But if you wanted to game on it, you definitely could. I did try Grand Theft Auto 5 and it runs at 30 FPS on low settings. Still works great though. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up, I'm going to leave a link in the description to exactly where I got mine. If you make him an offer for 270, I can't guarantee you're going to get it, 
but there's a good chance because that's what I made my offer on. It's a cool little mini PC to mess around with and I'm really enjoying it now. I really do appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe because I got a lot more coming. If you want to see anything else running on this, please let me know in the comments and I'll try my hardest to get a video made ASAP. Like always, thanks for watching.